uh, for that, Mitesh. Uh, well, uh, let's hop across to Manisha Gupta. She's standing by to give us a quick insight into commodity markets. Hi, Manisha. Morning. Morning, Nigel. Thank you for that. Well, I'm looking at the copper prices, which are off the three-week highs, and we haven't been able to cross above that 790 mark on the MCX either. The reason that you have seen this sharp decline come in for copper is because the funds really seem to be dumping their long positions as of now. So I was looking at the data uh, in the markets, and as per that, this is the first time in five months that we have net shorts being building up in case of copper contracts there on LME and in Shanghai as well. And I'll show you that via data as well. And this comes in from CFTC, by the way. So in month of January, the long contracts were at 78,000, which currently stand at 37,000. So nearly half of the kind of longs that we were holding in Jan. Jan was a great month because the markets were opening up. China was opening up as well. And the markets did believe that we would be looking at very strong demand from China especially. And this is uh, uh, the shots really. In, in January, they were as low as 6,000, right now standing at 40,000. So six times of an increase in shots here. So net longs have declined and the shots have increased by a big margin. So when you look at the open interest itself, that is uh, strongly bending towards further decline in case of the copper prices there. And this is happening even as we have been telling you that the Peru mining exports are down by 20% for the month of Jan. That's on an year-on-year -year basis. There are concerns on supply and mining there. You also have been looking at lower inventories into the market. There's a Goldman Sachs report which says that the clean energy demand for copper for 2023 itself is estimated 30% higher on an year-on-year -year basis here. Also, Goldman Sachs says that the global inventories will fall to all-time lows of 125,000 tons by the end of second quarter, that is by the end of September itself. Take a look at the inventories to begin with. So whether it is about uh, INE, LME or Shanghai, we are looking at inventories much on the lower side. Shanghai stocks have declined by 91,000 just in the month of March here. And when you look at the LME stocks, they're trading at just about 41,000. This is the lowest in that that we have seen in 16 years, by the way, for the copper LME stocks there. The outlook or the forward-looking statements coming in uh, from Trafigura are quite on the stronger side. They're expecting $12,000 per ton of copper prices in this year itself. Goldman Sachs has been talking about 15000 by 2025. Well, just to tell you that right now, copper prices are trading at $9,000. All-time high has been at 10845 So we are far away from there. And the, as you can see, the money manager investment funds do not believe that the copper prices are going much higher. But that's not the case from banks and brokerages, which continue to be very bullish in sense of copper. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So copper at an all-time high, 